Previously on Trash Tank. He doesn't really get what these people want. And absolutely none of them are people he trusts not to kill him at the first <laughs> opportunity. I promise that I personally will not bring your innocent friends to harm. This man who calls himself Regular Bob is a species of visitant, which is what we call alien, called a Rothic. One thing that is they're infamous for is that they have a very unhealthy addiction to kills of glory. The Fez is actually called the Fez of Infinite Hunger. It willingly consumes chains from its wear, occasionally giving out minimal rewards. Mmm, yes. Oh boy, this is terrifying. <laughs> and almost challengingly, he says, Hopper Scotch? You talking to me? Hopscotch. Anyone want to play hopscotch over here? What is hopscotch? Death poker. Misha, you are back in the land of tomorrow, about one hour out from when the 10th World exhibit and auction begins. Things have calmed down a little bit. A lot of the biggest spenders have gotten ready for the exhibit, so many of the gambling games have shut down. But those that aren't are advertising even harder. Except for one. Across a hallway of people yelling for your time, an array of angrily flipped tables and chaffed chessers players, you see a man with spotted auburn hair, square sunglasses, and a beaming smile looking right at you while twirling two humming pearls in his right hand. Are we still holding um, the stuff that we got back from Fancy Tom and Co? Yeah, so you have, I mean, you have all the stuff. You have, like, the blueprints. You have the, the little simplified version of the blueprints. But the big thing is you have that, like, announcement being like, oh, come win this prize, and you've got two pearls of your own. Great. Uh, he'll, Hopper will look at the letter. He's holding the pearls, and he'll turn to Misha and be like, Misha, I think we got to go over there. I think, I think... I think I gotta play a game. So you start making your way over there and he is getting super excited. Like that smile is just getting bigger. But as it happens, your walkie-talkie crackles to life again. Uh, and you hear a voice on the other side and say, Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Scotch, are you there? Uh, yeah. What's, he hello, what's up? Hey, uh, Mr. Scotch, it's uh, me, uh, regular Bob. I'm an uh, employee of uh, Miss, Miss Styles. Okay. Uh, I'm just calling because uh, I got some documents here. Uh, and Miss, Miss uh, Styles said that if I ever got confused about anything, uh, I should just call you, uh, ask a question. You got a quick second for me, uh, Mr. Scotch? Sure. All right. Uh, so I'm just uh, I'm filing these. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm taking care of these files in uh, Miss Styles' drawers. Uh, and she's got a pretty big folder right here about the Jagged Dream. Uh, I just wanted to verify that uh, you uh, a couple days ago went in and you actually uh, broke into one of their lairs, like fought one of uh, their leaders. Uh, looks like uh, Miss Leany, uh, Miss Vera Leany, uh, and got away to live to tell the tale. Uh, I just wanted to verify that that information is is correct. Yes. All right. Uh, sounds good. That's Mister. Uh, that's that's very impressive. Uh, by the way, Mister Scotch, I uh, haven't heard anyone really do something that, uh, that, that impressive before. Like, you and your friends are, uh, really, uh, really something. Is there anything more you, uh, want me to add to this document before I put it back in Miss Lorraine's drawers? As Hallie, I'm very confused. What he said was correct, right? Yeah. Come He's on. just verifying. He's called, because Miss Lorraine is like, hey, he wants a call in case he wants to verify anything. He's vilifying our eligibility for something, all right. All right. All right. So then, as Hop, just, uh, thanks, I guess. Of course, Mr. Scotch. Uh, I'll let you know if I, uh, need anything. And it blips off as he's, like, kind of, his, his voice kind of drones off a little bit. Okay. That was weird. And then he just kind of, like, shakes it off and keeps going towards, uh, Hopscotch Guy. Yeah, Hopscotch Guy. His name is Ashen. Ashen, that's what it was. And as you get closer, he starts twirling harder and he's like, Hopscotch, are you here finally to play Hopscotch? I guess so. All right. Well, come on, take a seat. Unfortunately, our employer said that we can't bring your innocent friends to harm, so I'm sorry your companion cannot play. It will just be uh, me and you. But I think that will be uh, more than interesting. Bring it on. 
and he flips his left hand and you can see uh, you can see a dozen lines of yellow light, which is the Easy Life mm. brand. It's like, uh, do you have one? Sure don't. Uh, well, that's going to be a problem there, Mr. Scotch. If you would just uh, put your hand in uh, our temporary brand, it'll wear off after about 30 minutes or so. Do I have to? Unfortunately, that's the only way we play here in Rulettia, unless you want to literally play with sticks and stones. And be honest, I, uh, and he looks down at his suit and just like wipes off some dirt. I'm not uh, really feeling that today. Before we get into this, and he's holding up the flyer, what's the, what's the prize for this? He's going to smile and say, well, uh, Mr. Scotch, one of the keys of gambling is never revealing your hands. So uh, all I'll say now is it's uh, something you'll want to take a look at. Well, it's not like revealing your hand. It's just telling me what I get out of this. <sighs> you always have to be so difficult about this, don't you? Why did you go with Mac? Mac got you to come along easy enough. What is it me? Is it me? Is, is there something wrong with me? Like I'm trying my hardest here to have a genuine threatening but entertaining presence and you're just getting in the way of it. Well, 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 Hopper is sensing genuine distress on the part of this man. Will be like, well, well, what, I'm ascertaining the level of threat. You know, is it worth it? Is this prize worth it? Well, it's, he's going to pull up a file that Lorraine just has on Hopscotch for all <laughs> her employees to use. She's going to be like, uh, well, it, it has a book. You like books, right? You're a fan of books? Yeah. It's a book. It's a very good book. I hate it. It's incredibly boring. So you'd probably love it. All right, fine. <laughs> fine. <laughs> and he's throw the flyer down and say, but I need to do this easy life thing. I didn't like the easy life thing. That's the only way to play. Again, unless you want, and he picks up just a bag of rocks, unless you'd rather play this way. No, and the hill, I, he's, he's doing the hand thing. He doesn't know. I do. Oh, well, I'm very glad you finally come to your senses. Let's begin, shall we? I'm gonna say you put your hand in and you feel like a little inky stamp. It's like someone did an ink stamp on your hand. You'd like at a carnival or something. Yeah, and it kind of chills up your spine a little bit. Um, and you come out and you see these dozen dull yellow lines. So they're not as vibrant as the ones that are actually like permanently installed. Okay. Um, they're a little duller because they're not quite as there. Uh, Misha, what are you doing during, like, how are you feeling during this whole scene? What are you up to? Well, I mean, normally Misha would be fairly interested in this situation and potentially even worried on uh, Hopper Scotch behalf. But they just, they just went through something. So I, I think that they would be kind of out of it a little bit. And they are just kind of sitting in the corner and like they haven't really even noticed what Hopper is doing. Like they are kind of looking at like into the distance. Okay. So you're kind of stirred from your moment a little bit as you hear a voice on the top of your head say, Mmm, yes, this game is incredibly boring. Mmm, my hunger for real scratch. I heard there was a gambling game back there where we could win plenty of money. Mmm, and you, it, the, the fez kind of get mu gets muffled as your scarf reaches up and just starts <laughs> muffling it. Mm, no, really, I give you half of the payment. I give you fourth of the payment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Misha first is going to be looking around confused because they are not realizing where the voice is coming from. I guess fi when, uh, finally, like, they're going to eventually realize that it's coming from your hat. Uh, they're going to reach for it to, to take it off. No, really, we can win plenty of scratch. Don't you want scratch? I'm so hungry. I'm so hungry. What are you doing with the hat as it's like pleading? Uh, they're, they're taking it out and they're looking at it and, and say, I do not care at the moment for any monetary currency. So if you are truly hungry, you might have to wait until later. I do apologize. As you're saying that your scarf is just kind of like waving the end of it, like waving a fist and is now like brushing, like get it out of here. <laughs> Get it out of here. Get the hat out of here. Misha not, will notice that and will say, I also happen to notice my scarf does not like you. Therefore, I do not know if I like you as much either when you're so talkative. I can talk less. I'm just hungry. I forget. Like, I do... I mean, I, I, I think I have a couple. So I guess Misha would just take one chin and, and give it to the hat. We all had 242 scratch left over from... No, we spent that. We spent that so fast. 
On what? We spent that on the Pie Pods. Yeah, we just burned it on Pie Pods. Oh, oh yeah, 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 dude. All right. Never mind. Then, yeah, I don't have it. Because if not, I was going to take, like, one one thing and give it, one scratch and give it to him. But. Okay. Uh, the hat's just going to be grumbling to itself, and the scarf's going to be, like, giving you... It's going to be just one hand of it. It's going to be like, dude, what the fuck? Why aren't you throwing this away? So they're both very upset at you. I think Mrs. is going to put the hat, pu- push the hat a little bit away from them and, <laughs> and be like, uh, until you are... Quieter, I will put you here, as I do not care to listen to your conversation at the moment. Just the hat? Yes, just the hat, not not, not the scarf. They, they... That's good, because as soon as you move it, you see the scarf went to push it off, and it's just kind of <laughs> laying down. As you uh, as you put it away, can you roll me a perception? Oh boy, I'm using my lucky die. Oh, and I rolled a 20 with my lucky die, that's why it's nice. a lucky die, see? Alright, so you see a lot of things. As you turn, you see a bar, and at that bar, you see just a lot of folks, they're just getting some drinks, uh, eating some Pie Pods. You see Mac is just sitting at the end, and they're just holding a notebook, and they're just intensely looking at you and looking at Hop. And you kind of can get the idea that Mac has probably been trailing you for a while now, and you just haven't noticed them. But they've been, like, following you, and they're, like, scribbling down notes in the notebook. And you, like, move the the fez, and you see them look down and start scribbling more notes. So you get the idea that Mac has been following you for a while. Oh no. But you also see a projector that's made out of uh, fountain bits, like you saw, you know, at to- the Tommy Funbuck statue. You see this fountain projector, and on it, you see a TV show, Trash Tank. And you see it introduce itself, and you see the Great Vespari, ugh. Tommy Funbuck, ugh. And Lorraine, ugh. <laughs> And then you you hear you hear exactly the premise. You hear like, oh man, it's either gonna be good or it's gonna be trash. And whoever gets trash gets trashed because they get killed. They get thrown in the garbage. And you catch some random person getting sharked. And then you see a new set of two people. Oh boy! Shock and Ellie, you walk out onto the main stage of Piper's Pit, where you confronted the Great Vespari earlier, and you see a massive crowd around. No, you see a massive, uh, like, group of, like, robots, of, like, very rudimentary robots that are just used to, like, clap and cheer and pretend to be an actual audience, except for one lady in the back who's, like, genuinely there, and she's got, like, her purse on her lap, and she's like, woo! Woo, I love this! Um, like, she's, she's loving it, but everyone else is fake to, like, fabricate a live audience. Um, on this panel in front of you, see on the left, the Great Vespari. You see in the middle, Tommy Funbuck. And you see on the other end, Lorraine Styles. And you walk forward with Ellie and Lowell. How are you three feeling right now? Well, how are you two feeling right now? I know how Lowell feels, because I'm him. Shock is a mixture of confused and scared. He has a plan still, but he's just a little worried that this might be the end of his journey. Ellie is mostly consumed by rage. <laughs> just like at the situation at life. At all three of the judges. And she's like clenching and unclenching her fists. The spikes are probably going in and out because she's just trying not to talk. And I should note that Zoe is not with you. Even though she got trapped seeing Tommy's secret like everyone else, Mauve used a large amount of her uh, favors from Tommy to convince her that so convince him that so he won't say anything and get her out of it. So those three are out of the picture. They've they've now uh, left and are watching you from a safe location. But you two are very much in danger still. And in front of you, Tommy Funbook looks forward and he says with kind of a sneer, "Well, welcome back to Trash Tank." I'm your host, Tommy Funbuck, and now we're gonna see our next contest, Trash! And he's cut off by Vespari, like slamming the trash button, just being like, trash, 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 their idea is trash. Oh no. And uh, Tommy looks from him back to you and says, well, looks like it's gonna be a short one today, my dudes. Hello and welcome to episode 29 of Quest Friends, Questionable Measures, part 11. I am Kyle, your GM, and I am back after our holiday break with um, more episodes and more more announcements. Yes, that is what I do at this moment. So I'll keep the announcements quick today to get right back into the episode. Our credit song, as usual, is Hitoshio by Miracle of Sound. Uh, We're going to the PodCon soon. Hallie, Emily, and I will be going to PodCon 2 in January. I think it's the 19th and 20th. 
Regardless, if you're going to be there and you're a listener, we have a table if you want to stop by. Also, just let us know. Like, we'd love to say hi to any listeners who are there at PodCon. This is our first convention as a podcast and my second convention ever, so I'm really nervous, but also really excited. But as for an actual call to action that everybody can do, we are officially two-thirds through Questionable Measures, which is going to be 15 parts. And I know that for sure because we finished playing it back in December. That gives me about a month and maybe a week from today until we record our first session for the next chapter, chapter four. And I need NPC names, I need location names, I need to restock Penny and Pocket for all of that, and I figured I'd reach out to for anybody who might be interested in helping me out with something like that, to anyone who might wanna, who might wanna help me out. And so the one thing you can do, like always, is tweet or Tumblr out about the show using the hashtag QuestFriends. Anyone who does that, their name will be put in the name pool, which I use to name characters, items, etc., etc. I figured out the majority of like the core kind of cast for chapter four because it's going to be a mystery show. Uh, And I would say 75% of those names were pulled from the name pool. The other thing you can do is that if you're interested in uh, providing an item, a cipher, an artifact, really anything in Penny and Pocket, please just anytime really in the month of January, you can feel free to uh, message out to the show. I've got an actual form below. Uh, Anything that you share with us for item ideas, I might change the name, might change the mechanics a little bit, but they will be put down in the show as something that our characters can pull from and buy at the store Penny and Pocket at the beginning of next arc. Don't feel any obligation to fill anything out. I'm going to be putting down a whole host of items as well, but if you were interested in potentially getting your name on the show that way, that is a thing that you can do. Otherwise, the most important thing you can do is, as always, just listen to the dang show, which I've been getting in the way of by doing all these announcements. So our next episode will be out on Monday, January 21st, and I will see you back. So hop. Yeah. When you get that brand on your hand, mm-hmm. on your left hand, you can see. Or are, are you holding the pearls in your left or right hand? Hop's left-handed, uh, so he would do his non-dominant hand into the brand. Okay, so that brand is on your right hand, and on your left hand, you see the two humming pearls turn into two blank twelve-sided die. Okay. So the game of hopscotch is played with two twelve-sided die. They're blank. That's why the brand is necessary, because essentially what's going to happen is you're going to roll the die. And when you hold the dice with your hands, the dozen lines on the back of your e- of the back of your branded line, it'll essentially fade, so it'll only show you the amount. So like, if you rolled a four and you touch it with your hand, the back of your brand will reveal only four of the dozen lines. Ah, so you can't cheat and say you rolled something else? You can't cheat, and it's also a way that you can roll the dice, but also have them clearly hidden, because like, the back of the card is the back of your hand. So that's how you see what your hand what your hand is, literally. Yeah. It's your hand. Eh, uh, yeah. Eh. <laughs> I didn't even think of that pun. Okay. You roll both dice and you bet how many points from your might, speed, or intellect pool you want to bet. You can do this on a temporary basis. Essentially, you're going to lose those, but you can get them back. The permanent basis is that you lose your maximum, but if you succeed, you gain maximum points to that point. Okay. So you're essentially trading either permanent maximums or just temporary amounts. So if you need to heal up at all, now could be a way to do it. But you'll have to bet in the same pool that you want to heal in. Okay. Whoever wins is the highest of the total of the two die. If you want to re-roll one of the die, you can re-roll it with a d10. If you want to re-roll both die, you use a d10. Okay. If there are any re-rolls, after the re-rolls, you bet again. And then you decide, you figure out who wins. And if you fold, if you choose the fold, uh, they'll only pull half of the points that have been betted. Does that make sense? Yes. So Ashton is going to look at you. So are we playing temporarily or permanently? Let's let's start with temporarily. All right. Do we want to be pulling from our swiftness, our strength, 
or our mind? Let's do mind. All right, you're... I lied. Speed. Let's do speed. All right, you're each going to bet one speed point as like a betting okay. start. Yeah. All right, roll your d20. D12? D- you have roll your d12? Twice or just once? Twice, because it's, it's two dice. I've already rolled mine. I know what I'm going to do. So uh, as I'm kind of like automatic. So when Hop puts his hands down on the two die, what does he see? He sees a three. And a 10. Okay, so I'm assuming because this is like death poker, there's like a bluff mechanic. I can see through motives and lies. Would that help me see through any bluff he has? Yeah, you can roll to see through his bluffs. Yeah, I'd like to do that, please. I didn't get out my d20. Uh, All right, I'm rolling to see whether he has a good hand or not, judging by his... That's a three, so... No clue. No. No idea. Hey, those those square sunglasses. Ooh. All right. So he's gonna look at you and say, "The hopscotch. Let's do uh, four. Four on the table. Sound good to you? So are you gonna match the bet before you re-roll? Yes. We've got now five int points on the table. Speed. Speed. Five speed points on the table. Shit. No, don't don't do that. Sorry, they keep bouncing out of my a six. He doesn't re-roll. He looks at you and he's like, "All right. How much on the table?" Unless you want to back out, of course. No shame in that. Okay. Um, do I have to raise? Oh, but that's going to give it away. Hopper's not good at these games. Um, <laughs> the thing is that I'm trying to do like the mathematical probability that he has a higher number than me, and it's just a little bit too high for Hop's comfort. But he doesn't want to give away um, that he's not doing great. Uh, I'll stay. All right. Yours first or mine? Please, after you. He's going to put down his hand, and he's going to turn over and reveal 11 bright lines. And then he's going to put on his hand on the other dice, and the 12th line lights up. How did you actually roll that well? Um, fuck you! All right. And as that, you feel five... Great. You feel... Actually, no, Hop calculates might speed in it. That's good. <laughs> That's right. You feel five speed points leave your body. Great. Uh, and enter into his. And he's like, oh... And she told me you would be a challenge. All right, we're going to move over. Misha, are you doing anything as you're watching this uh, disaster on both ends? Um, yeah, so so Misha is going to look at the screen yeah, after they saw Shug and Ellie, especially after they saw the shark thing. But they also are really angry about Mac just being there. So I want to ask first, are there any cigarettes in the floor? <laughs> uh... Yeah, you can see a trail of them leading. You don't know how far back, but they're leading back a pretty far fucking way. Okay, so I want Misha to take as many as as they can in the in the general area, and then. Okay, you got twenty. You got twenty because you rolled twenty last time. Okay, excellent. So they're gonna pick twenty cigarettes, and then they're going to approach. I'm gonna mention this. You could go and like pick up a hundred, but you would be all the way back at like the roller coaster, and then back at like no. the the hotel. So <laughs> I'm assuming you don't go that far. No, no, no. Like yeah, they don't. They, yeah, and they don't want to go back there anyway. So like there's gonna pick them in the vicinity and then they're going to approach Mac and say it it appears as if someone keeps picking this up and if you want to cover your trail you should stop throwing this <sighs> kid I'm not the one who needs to be covering their tracks cause I'm not the one with secrets to hide Misha's going to look at their notebook and then back at Mac and see how much have you witnessed saw you take those blueprints Saw you go on that roller coaster ride and now you're trying to win some prize? <sighs> I've seen enough that makes you seem like the biggest suspect of all, but could just be me. So you just witnessed us being the roller coaster? Uh, something like that. Saw you putting up a pretty big fight against some uh, pretty unsavory folk. Who are you doing this for? I'm doing it for the law. <laughs> Miss Styles might trust you, but you adventurers are always the same. Well, I do not believe Miss Styles trusts us, but I also do not trust you, as you have no right to be spying upon people. So you are going to hand me this notebook, and they're going to look at them in the eyes when they say that. Uh, do you want to roll to intimidate? Sure! I'm trying to think if I have something that I can use to intimidate. Lucky die. Can, can my scarf also like be, be like <laughs> menacingly looking at? Yeah, just like... <laughs> We are Venom. 
16. Um. Actually, I, I want so that people say that I don't hoard XP. I, I want to spend one so that, like, my scarf looks, like, especially intimidating. Like, it looks like they have, like, little tendrils of, like, stuff coming out of them. Max gonna take the book. Alright, I see. I understand. Gonna take it, close it, slide it to you. Pull out another one. Theft of evidence. That'll be the first thing on the new list. Uh, and we're gonna flash back. We're gonna move on over to uh, yeah. This is a lot of hopping around. We're gonna move. It's basically it's basically a combat. I'm just not saying it. We're gonna move the shock and alley. And Lowell is kind of looking at you and he's like, "All right, buddy, it's showtime. Let's pitch the worst thing ever. Nothing at all." All right. So while while we know that Lowell is sort of pulling the strings here, do I as a player get a bit of free reign to freestyle here? Yeah, essentially you'll freestyle and he'll just uh, he'll just remind you of things. So that'll be the way of playing it out without having like me just keep interrupting. All right, then. Also, um, I just rolled really quickly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. You rolled. What did, what did you roll for? Um, so I was rolling to see if Ellie was going to keep her comments to herself. So basically a composure check. I did not succeed my composure check. I'm just going to let you two play out this, uh, this, this, uh, trash fire. I don't. I don't think I need to add anything here. I'm just going to let. Hello to everyone here at this lovely, historic live audience. The woman in the back goes, woo! Woo! Can I, can I say that as, as Shock started speaking, we should have turned around to the screen? Yeah. Uh, we are here to pitch you the greatest idea. Do you hate spending money to make money? Do you wish you had a profit margin of all of it? All of the money? <laughs> well, we have something for you. Invincible Grandma, thing of the past. Now we have the latest and most innovative, most phantasmagorical of creations. We have... Brain bud. And Shock like waves his arms through the air like the SpongeBob imagination rainbow. Lowell's doing it with you. <laughs> uh, kind of like, kind of like just being like, uh, he's actually doing the pitch at the same time as you to help match your movements and help you feel confident. And Shock continues, people love entertainment. So entertainment makes money and entertainment advertising makes even more money. But paying people? No one likes doing that. Oh, I absolutely hate it. And like Tommy Fumbuck is fuming with rage about the idea of paying people for their labor. <laughs> what if instead you paid them with something else? Something that didn't cost you a single scratch. Exposure. So like Shock's speaking pretty loudly. So in a medium tone that is supposed to be under her breath, but because I did not do well in my composure check, <laughs> it is louder than it was supposed to be. <laughs> Are you capitalist shitbags who don't want to pay your workers or care about anyone? Um. And like throughout Shuck's speech, she will be saying snarky, mean things in the background. If I'm allowed a little bit of creative freedom here, I imagine that Shock like just freezes for a moment, like, oh, what are we doing? But Lowell's just like, oh, that's that is just right, Ellie Badge. We we don't want to pay workers. No, no, that's not what we're here for today. Instead, you create a prestigious collection of the finest entertainment, an especially awesome channel, <laughs> and then you draw all other content creators in Ruledia. Nay, the steadfast, nay, the ninth world, and with the power of exposure, the promise of the signal boost that they will suddenly be attached to your massive influence and network. They will make content for your, your new service for the low, low price of absolutely nothing. They, they'll just do it for free. So I'm not even going to have you roll there because that was incredible. It was. And Tommy <laughs> Funbuck, you know his secret, so he wants you dead. But even he has raised, his, put his hand back from the trash button and is kind of leaning back. And that's when Lorraine pipes in. Shock, darling, your, your speech, lovely, amazing, incredible. But 
there are a few details that are missing here. How are you going to organize all this information? And the big thing, exposure. What does exposure even mean? Exposure to the elements? Exposure to bad influences? What are we exposing them to and how on earth will that convince them? And Tommy Fumbuck looks at her and looks and, he's like, and he kind of like nods and is like, No, she's right. I'm a very thoughtful investor. Uh, no, no. <laughs> and I want to know how you plan on getting all this done. Uh, and you can see him lean over again. And we are going to move over to Hop for his second round of Hopscotch. And like, uh, fucking Ashen is gloating here. He's very proud of himself. Hopper's pissed. Um, because <laughs> the last thing that Ashen said was like, oh, she said you'd be a challenge, right? Yeah. So question, first of all, when I designate someone as guilty, it says it helps attacks. Are we going to go with only physical attacks or can I argue that? Yeah, you can argue that. I'm like an asset to bluff things now. I fucking love it. So Hopper will sit up a little bit straighter, take the pearls again and go, let's go permanent this time. Oh, I like this. Mm. You aren't as talented as she says, but you are as bold. Let's go permanent. And then before we roll, I want to make a little bit of small talk and just say, so how'd you come to work for Lorraine? Well, you know, she sees it. She knows a talent when she sees it. Thought she could use my skills. Hopper raises an eyebrow and goes just to play hopscotch. Roulette is a high stakes game. You need to have someone who you know can win. So you haven't worked for her for very long then. Oh, about since she arrived six months ago, but do you really want me to just spout exposition at you or do you want to play hopscotch? I'd like both, if possible. All right. Oh my God. He's gonna roll one dice and say anything else you'd like to know? Why'd you decide to work for her? What'd she offer you? For as much as Rulettia praises itself on innovation, once people get their money, they'll just do anything to hold on to it. The boss was a breath of fresh air. Doesn't care about any of that, just cares about what's most exciting, what's most thrilling, and I'm gonna say that is in short supply in a place like this. In a place like Roulettea, living for the thrill of it is in short supply. As I said, those at the top always know how to rig it, so that they always are at the top. There's no innovation once someone gets to the top, because they're just gonna do their best to stay there once they figure out a foolproof method. Let's do our roll. Okay, but just like, so you know I'm coming back to that. I have a two and a five. <sighs> And then just letting you as GM know, as soon as we roll, I want to use mind reading to know what he has. So, yeah, give me give me a roll. And remember, you can use XP to make it easier or automatically succeed. I'd like to use XP to automatically succeed. I'd like to use XP to automatically succeed this. All right, that'll be two XP. Which means I have two left. So I have a normal amount of XP now. What is your first question? Um, So he's going to act confident what he rolled no matter what. But like, is it? Is it bullshit? No, oh, it's good. It's a real good roll. Fuck. All right. Um, how much did we bet? I don't know that we bet anything. We didn't bet anything yet. Uh, he's going to leave it up to you to bet. All right. Well, that cost me four int points. <laughs> Just going down the drain. Um, let's do, let's do, what do you use up? Let's do might. Let's do might. And you've automatically put in one in the pool. I gotcha. Because that's how it works. Um, all right. I will bet another might point. All right. He'll put in another might point. I'm going to reroll both of mine, so I use the d10 and the d8. This is the worst session I've ever played, just so we all are clear on this. Hop sees a six and a four. You look a bit tired, Mr. Scotch. Are you sure you want to keep playing? I'll fold this round, but we'll play again. I would lose a might point permanently? Yes. That's fine. <laughs> okay, I'm just marking this on my sheet. It was a shame, too. I was so excited to see the look on your face as I showed you my rolls. They're probably worse than what mine were. What were your rolls? Gotta play to find out that kind of thing. Well, you can't just say I was so excited to show you these rolls. They'd be like, no, you had to play. All right, we're starting a new round. All right, bring it over to Misha. Misha. Yes. You are seeing disasters happen all over the place. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so, oh, sorry. If you were going to say. No, are you going to do anything? Just, there is just disaster everywhere. <laughs> Okay, so okay, I would say that like they got momentarily distracted by shocks talking and like they for a moment completely forgot what they were doing because they were really fascinated and proud at, at shock. They didn't really understand most of the words that they were saying, but it, it seemed like it seemed really smart and like they were scared still for shock, but they were also really proud. But then they're going to force themselves a little bit to shift their focus. 
focus towards Mac. Uh, and I want to see if I can tell how many notebooks they have. Like they should have like a limited amount of notebooks in their in their in their bag. Like do, do they have a bag? Like and I try to to take the bag from them. Yeah, you're just mugging Mac. <laughs> I support it, honestly. I can have my scarf like, try and take it while I try to figure out how many I have XP. Alright, you, you have you have an asset on stealing the bag. Give me a roll. I rolled a 20. I promise I rolled a 20. I can show you. Alright, so the bag is a pocket in Mac's coat. Okay. Just like they can infinitely pull out cigarettes, they can infinitely pull out notebooks, but your scarf can easily get to that pocket or that coat. Because remember, you have a major effect now, so what do you want to do with it? As you mug this person who thinks you're a suspect of crime. I'm so upset because I left my hat in the bench, but like the hat eats things, so I could have just fed <laughs> the notebooks to my- Oh, the hat eats money. I mean, it could eat other things, right? It's true, it's very hungry. It's very hungry, but I left it. I would say you can, if you want to have it, you can have it. I assumed you took it with you. Okay, can that, can that be part of my effect then? I want to kind of <laughs> do this, this thing where where like my scarf tries to take the, the notebooks out of, of their pocket while tossing them to like and like Misha will have like sorry I think my thing moved Misha's gonna like have the hat like holding the hat with one hand as like they throw in like a hoop as if it was like like a like a basketball thing or something like but that's like mm, yes <laughs> mm, yes uh and I'm gonna throw a GM intrusion at you oh no because you're doomed who are you gonna give the other point to I'm giving it to Sean because I really like how Tom did that channel awesome thing. Like, all right, so Ari, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. How emotionally connected are you to the Fez of Infinite Hunger? Personally, I, I mean, I, I like how it looks on Misha, but I'm not as emotionally connected as I am to my scarf. Cool, because uh, the Fez is like, mm, yes, yes, no, I hunger more, and um, propels itself off of the books that it is eating, which is a stream, and it's just like Pac-Man, like, waka, 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 waka. Oh, no! Jumps through them and into the pocket, and suddenly you see the pocket start to bulge and expand, and you hear, yes, I'm growing! And it gets bigger and bigger, and eventually the pocket bursts as a man-sized fez of infinite hunger comes out alongside a torrent of notebooks. Shock and Ellie, we are on to you. <laughs> so I'm very glad you asked uh, about exposure. You see, what do artists actually do? Who knows? Artists spend all of their time making things that have no real value except what people are willing to pay for it. But who says what art is worth? Why, it's, it's you people up there, you great judges, you, you connoisseurs of artistic value. So you see, the artist's eternal struggle is to find someone to pay them for their work. But you have to be famous to get lots of money for your artwork. And that's where exposure comes in. You offer them the idea that they will get seen by a lot of people, exposed to the world. And once their work has been exposed, then people will suddenly pay money for something that has uh, here to now been given freely. One second, Ellie. You rolled a one on your composure check, so I think now is a good time yeah! for that failure to come into play. Oh, I have so many regrets. I'm so sorry. You're doing so well, Tom. Oh, it's so good. I rolled a one. You're doing great and keep carrying the team after I ruin it all. <laughs> We're being broadcast everywhere, right? Yep. Everyone roulette at least. Okay. Out of character, Kyle. Yeah? You may know what I'm considering. I don't. But I don't want it to ruin the plot and stuff. Let me mute for one second. What do you want to do? I want to... Go ahead, Ellie. <laughs> We're in the final hour. We are like, disaster has hit everyone. Uh, we have like one more turn before this episode ends in a beautiful disaster. Speaking of exposure, we've never been broadcast before, but it feels like if so many people can see me and we're already talking about exposure, 
Maybe we should just lay it all out on this table of trash in front of these trash people. You want to know a little secret about Tommy Funbuck? You want to know what he's doing with those Easy Life pods? Take a look at those brands on your hands. Want to know what happens when you die and come back? Oh my god. Guess who it helps? Tommy Funbuck. Because guess what? He's stealing little bits of your life energy every time you regenerate. And he's not actually that great of a leader. I just feel like Roulettio would be the perfect place to be an actual lawless town. A shock. I like what she's saying, but not right now. And I need each of you to roll a d20. 14. 15. Barely shocks message of like, oh, we're just performers on the show. Barely beats out Ellie's call for a bolt. <laughs> Are you certain about that? Because Shock stands there like, Lowell is like, I don't know, just like, oh, doing slashing gestures across <laughs> his throat, trying to be like, no, 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 bring it, bring it back in, stay on message. And Shock is just like, no, yeah. And Shock says, yeah, and I filmed all of it. And I would like, can I project like my, uh, the recording from my recorder headband? All right, so I will say that you two have made an impression on the working class of Rolandia. You've also made an impression on Tommy Funbook. And he slams, trash, 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 trash. And he leans over and he start, tries to slam Lorraine's. And Lorraine's like, no, Tommy, Tommy, wait. You make an interesting offer, Shock. This place is dreadfully boring. I would be remiss to see some action. Now, before we continue, I have a question. Uh, Vespari, was this was this the uh, <laughs> young boy in blue you described as ruining your performance? Oh, no. We don't have to talk about this now. Even on the brink of revolt, there's no need to do so. Oh, okay, was he, though? Yes, yes, he was. Yes, he was. He, he's a ruiner of art. He's an art ruiner. And his program will ruin art, too. But, uh... If I remember correctly, it was uh, it was a trick where he uh, was surrounded by like a whirlwind of, of your metal and stuff and, and shot it out, or was it something like that? Yes, absolutely. And I want to understand correctly, no harm was brought to him during that, correct? No, none, none at all, not yet. Well, in that case, Shock, your pitch is pretty grand, but unfortunately, I'm gonna have to say it's trash. And she slams down the button from beneath you, a torrent of garbage comes up and starts spinning around you in a whirlwind. So we're kind of in, uh, we're, we're pretty far into the episode. We're kind of in endgame now. So I'm going to say this is our last turn for everybody, if that's okay. all right. Hop, you see this disaster. You have this asshole in front of you. You see just a pile of books in the corner and you have this asshole who has evidence you need and keeps winning. What are you going to do? Okay, well, first of all, just because Hopper wants to know, I want to use one of my mind reading questions to ask how the fuck he's cheating. Because he's cheating. He just is. He has, he has a second pair of dice at his feet and he's just tapping the 11 and the 12 with his foot. And that's how he's getting the brand message. So he's not actually touching the dice on the table. He's just pretending to, and he's touching a second pair with his feet. Okay. And Hopper can see out of the corner of his eye, the the show? The show, and you can see the books. You can see everything. I think it's a time for us to bring things together. You can see everything falling apart. Okay, so Hopper can just kind of notice what's going on in the back. I'll be like, what? <laughs> Misha is actively <laughs> mugging someone. <laughs> well, like, the hat explodes. He's confused. The time is now. <laughs> He's in front of me. The books are to the right. Those are just Max books. You haven't seen the book that uh, Ashen has. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were saying that, the, that it was just over there. No. Okay. So instead of re-rolling, can I try to kick the dice out from under the table? Yeah, give me a roll. She's like, fuck this. And then, um, well, I'm going to roll first to see if I succeed. I'd like to use an XP to re-roll that three. Can I do that? Yeah, you can. Because I want this to be fun and cool. Okay, it's not going to be because that was a five. Um, so what Hopper's going to try to do is he's going to say, um, you know, I think Mac is better at their job than you. Because people who have to cheat usually aren't very good at what they do. And then he's going to try to kick the dice out from under the table. He's going to stop you with his leg and say, resorting to violence and slander, Hopscotch. 
well, if you're going to get to this point, then I might as well leave with the prize. Uh, no, no, no. You invalidated your right to have that prize as soon as you started cheating. Started cheating? How? Where did I cheat? You've got the dice under the table. You've got a second pair of dice. He starts, like, silently <laughs> making noises, and then he tries to run. No, 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 absolutely not! I'm after him! I am on him! No, this is not happening. I am making... I'm... I... Like... Hopper's gonna scream like, cheaters never win! And then, like, launch himself across the table to try to, like, stop him from running away. Oh, give me a roll! I am putting, uh, would this be speed or might effort? Uh, speed to catch. Okay, I'm putting a level of speed effort into this. 19! Oh, my one good yes. roll! Yes! Alright, you have a minor effect. What do you want this minor effect to be as you just topple him? <laughs> <laughs> Topple this fucking dweeb. I want what I, I want the thing that I want to fall out of his pocket so that I can just grab it without having to like pickpocket him or fight him for it. I just want to take it up off the ground. All right, you uh, take it. This book slides out. All you can see is that it's an atlas of major events in the ninth world. Don't have time to look at more of it. You go, you pick it up. What's your next move? I'm running towards Misha and on the way to Misha, I'm like, Misha, we gotta go. <laughs> we gotta get out of here. All right, Misha. Mac is looking at you. Hop is looking at you. The bar is looking at you. It feels like the world's looking at you. And you see Hop running, being like, all right, we gotta go, get in the van. <laughs> is, is Misha also, like, is, is this happening at the moment where it seems like the shark is going to, like, get shock? Yes, yes, everything is falling to shit <laughs> at once. Okay, then, then Misha is going to point uh, with one hand to the screen and with one hand to the to the fess or like to the to to Mac and and then and then be like, but but shock, he, he's in, he's in danger, ha- yep, yep. Simon, we can't. No, no, we gotta we gotta go to wherever they are. Where oh, where is the thing? Um, that's where we're going. We gotta go. <laughs> M- Misha is going to to just uh. Okay, Misha, can you? I mean, I don't want to like direct what your character would do, but Misha won't move until unless like you actually like drag them out of the place because they're just like fixed on the. Oh yeah, on his way past, he's like he's not trying to roughhouse you into moving, but on his way past, he'll like kind of grab your sleeve to try to get you to move with him. Okay, like as you do that, and then, then Misha is going to do that, but they're still going to have their eyes like looking back at the screen and at Mac. Oh, sh- shock! But, but but shock though. Can you use your your connection to find him? I know where he is, but uh, I can try, and they they are going to try and do that, though they're a bit hesitant because of the last thing that involved their connection, and then going to be like, Shock, please be safe. I will. Shock raises out his right hand as soon as the vortex starts whirling around them and activates countermeasures. So, like I said, Shock holds out his right hand, and the glove lights up, uh, and that little, like, holographic display pops up, and he presses a couple of buttons, and then there's just sort of, like, a burst of bluish light, and all of the trash bits that were swirling around in a vortex starting to form the shark around them just freeze in space for a second, and then drop to the ground, as if there's no force controlling them at all, which is, in fact, true. Uh, whatever was controlling them has been cancelled out. They shoot to the side, and Ellie and Shock both roll speed defense. Whack. 15. And 11. All right, Shock, take four points of might damage. <gasps> as a t-shirt just penetrates your shoulder. <gasps> and Not you a good see, enough reason to use the word penetrate. <laughs> and you see the, uh, the mascots just shooting at you, and one of them is aimed up a bazooka. What the fuck are you two going to do? I want to place myself between the bazooka and shock. I would like to activate resonance field. That's such a better idea. <laughs> uh, so I believe this is the first time I have ever used resonance field, despite the length of time I've had it. So let's describe it. All right, so so shock is reeling from this t-shirt gun, um, but he clears his mind for a moment, closes his eyes, and a glowing grid of light surrounds his entire body. Uh, it glows there for a second or two, and then fades. But when it does, uh, shock's staff begins floating in the air on its own next to him. Uh, and what this does is that for let me read the description here to be sure. Uh, faint lines call you choose, blah, blah, blah. The effect lasts for one minute. When a creature within immediate range makes an attack against you, the pattern energizes to block the attack. And I am choosing to flavor that with the staff blocking the attack. 
You can make an intellect defense roll in place of the defense roll you would normally take. Uh, if you get a minor effect, the creature attacking takes one point of damage, and if you get a major effect, the creature attacking takes four points of damage. All right, that bazooka shoots. Roll me that intellect defense, my dude. All right, so you know what? Let's kick in two levels of effort here. One of those will be like completely negated with my edge. I've got a lot of intellect to spend. I can afford to be greedy. Which is good, because I rolled five. Is a five that's two steps easier going to be a, a dodge? Ellie, take eight points of damage. And shock, uh, that's before armor. And then eight. shock, eight. Oh, before damage. Eight. So you, before because damage. you have four fucking armor, it'll be four. And shock, I want you to take two points of uh, splash damage. Oh, two, only two points of splash damage? I was about to say, whew, shock's not doing well. Incidentally, shock's not doing well anyway. <laughs> okay, so you are hurting. What is your next step? We should... Go. Shock is going to far step up into the like arena stands, like perhaps amidst the the like clapping robots. For the second time in two hours, Shock far steps away. <laughs> Does he take Ellie with him? Uh, I will take Ellie with me then. All right, you two Ooh. blip away as another shot goes and accidentally hits Tommy Funbuck. <laughs> oh, Ellie's um, gonna laugh. As she's being far stepped away. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm assuming you two book it out. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You two book it. Earlier, I said you were fugitives. Now you're all actually fugitives. <laughs> Although you have started, as you run out, you can see some of the folks who haven't really been purchasing stuff. Some of the folks who haven't really noticed because they've been going from place to place. Kind of fucking shit up. Like as you run and try to escape certain pathways are opening for you uh, as like some workers push uh, like some of the bad tourists to the side. Workers unite! So you're able to su successfully get out. Where are our two groups going? As we run, we sing. Can you hear the people sing? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I don't know. Hop and Misha would have been heading towards like the TV station or wherever they think that Jacques and Ellie are. But it didn't occur to me to ask if we knew where that was. Misha knows where it is because it's Piper's Pit. That's where oh. they saw the Vespari. Right, right. Okay, yeah. It's the same stage. I forgot. Uh, yeah. So we are booking it towards there. Shock will open up his mental connection with Misha again and say, Misha Jarvis, we made it out. We're safe. Uh, I think we should all meet up near where that auction was going to be so we can we can get Kubo and get out. Misha is going to uh, have an audible sigh of relief. Uh, and then they're going to just say to Shock, understood. And then they're going to turn to Hop and say, S Scott, Simon, Simon, they they are fine. They have escaped. We Shock has te is telling me to meet at the auction place to formulate our plan. Oh, thank goodness. All right, yeah, let's go there. And after about 10 minutes, uh, after about five minutes, the two groups see each other as you're running towards the same place near the, the place you're going to meet. Uh, Misha's, they're going to start speeding up to meet them, and then they're just going to stop themselves, like, in the middle. Shock is basically going to do the same thing, where he sort of, like, runs to meet Misha, but it's, like, <laughs> feels a little too awkward to hug. Like, doesn't quite, like, go for a hug, just, like, I'm yeah. very happy to see you again, Misha Jarvis. Misha's going to nod and say, me too, Shock. I, I am glad you made it safe. Also very happy to see you're okay, Hopperscotch. You too, Shock. Did she, did she, did she hurt you? So, like, you said it punctured me. Am I, like, bleeding from these t-shirt guns? That was guns? the t-shirt gun. That wasn't Lorraine. Yeah. That was your yeah, actions. Yeah, but is he bleeding? Um, yeah, I'd say bleeding a little. Bleeding or bruising? Like, how, how visible? Because, like, if we should notice, then their reaction... Oh, Hopper's just, I mean, he doesn't necessarily notice any wound. He's just like, did she hurt you? How'd that go? Shock will, like, hold his arm a bit and be like, oh... You know. Someone shot him, but it wasn't Lorraine. Typical. Everything all sort of happened at once when we got trashed. I really would like to leave this place soon. Same. Agreed. All right. Everyone, including Ari, just because I think it's unfair to leave her out, everyone take an XP, because I got one last GM intrusion for you today. <laughs> oh, no. As you're talking, you hear the screeching of an oh, RV no. turning the corner. The doors open up and two pairs of gruff hands pull all of you into a dark room where you can see above you Mauve and June staring down with their arms crossed. <laughs> and June just says, We have words. <laughs> Misha 
is like trying to distract them. Like, I, I, I would like you to tell me, uh, t- tell me, tell me about the law. <laughs> tell me about, <laughs> tell me about your duty to the law. Well, the law began about a hundred years ago with Henry A. Lawson, who invented rules <laughs> with his pal, Jerry Rule, together. <laughs> Please. I'm so hungry. Feed me Seymour. Feed me Seymour. <laughs> Feed me all night long. Wait. Feed me Misha. <laughs> Feed me all night long. 